The Soviet N-1 rocket was the most powerful rocket ever built, even more powerful than the Saturn V rocket. Hey, I'm John Williams, and I'm at the National Air and Space Museum in Washington, D.C., and this is the N-1 moon rocket, which was the Soviet's version of the Saturn V moon rocket. So this is actually the largest rocket and most powerful rocket ever built and flown in history. So amazing. And it was originally developed in 1965 when Sergei Korolev, who was the chief designer of the Soviet moon program, came up with this new rocket design to beat the Americans to the moon. And a problem was is that the Saturn V the Americans had a three-year head start on developing this rocket before the Soviets even started even sketching the N-1 rocket. And Sergei actually died in 1966 when this was still in the development plan phase. So he never got to see it work. So he wasn't there to really see all the details and all the flaws come out because this was his rocket. So let's take a closer look. So if you look down at the first stage, you can see 30 NK engines. That is the most amount of engines that have ever been put on a first stage in history. And each of those engines, to collectively, all of them together, produce 9.9 .9 million pounds of thrust to push the rest of this rocket up, which is un unbelievable. And then if you look up at the second stage, you can see this grid pattern. That is because when the stages were separating, they needed a gap for the, all the thrust that was coming out of these engines Otherwise, they would literally disintegrate and probably ruin the whole rocket. So they had these gaps, so the thrust had somewhere to go so this could cleanly separate. And you can see the engines under there. There were eight of them on the second stage. Anyway, so the third stage had four engines and the same type of grid pattern. And after that stage, you had the fourth stage, which would have pushed them into orbit and possibly on a lunar, traje and on a lunar traje trajectory out of Earth's orbit. And then you had the fifth stage, which was the whole spacecraft. And it's under here right now, you cannot see it. But then if you look up at the top, you can see the launch escape system. Now, this launch escape system has a lot of little openings and thrusters. And if you look over at the American launch escape system, it looks a little similar. That is because each of those systems used, I think, solid fuel propellant, which was very powerful and can lift the St the cap the man capsules off the rocket and the americans developed a triangular capsule while the soviets developed a gumdrop style capsule so it's really cool and then if we compare the two rockets and then we look down at the first stage for like the saturn 5 it only had five engines compared to 30. and the reason for that is because the americans had the financial resource and time to develop a high combustion um, super big powerful engine the F1 engine the Soviets did not have enough time or the expertise to develop that engine in time and this rocket was 365 feet tall meanwhile the N1 was 345 feet tall and this one was more powerful but this one was more reliable and if Sergei Korolev had not died Perhaps the Soviets would have beaten us to the moon because he would have seen this rocket become successful. Now, this rocket flew four times. Each time it failed, mostly through mid-flight bef before stage separation between the first and second stage. And on the second flight, once the rocket had cleared the tower that was holding onto it, it actually suffered major problems in the rocket engines which had caused a fire. And then it lost thrust and what happened was is that the rocket literally tilted to the side and fell right back down on the pad, causing the largest non-nuclear man-made explosion in history. Unbelievable. Now let me show you one thing I'm sure you've never seen between these two moon programs. So this spacesuit right here proves the Soviet Union was serious about going to the moon. I mean, this is literally their moon suit. And it's expensive to develop one of these. And it's literally a full suit if you come around here. It is a full piece of a suit. And you can see in the back right here where the, at, where the cosmonaut would have had to get in. It's a tight squeeze, but everything was in one piece. And the life support system is that backpack right there that pulls out. So this really proves that the Soviets were serious about the moon. But if you look over at the um, Apollo spacesuit, you can see it's different. 
The Apollo space suit comes in pieces. It's built in pieces. Instead of being all one suit with like one rotating hatch to get in, the backpack, the helmet, the gloves, the boots, and the uh, ropes that connected to the backpack, they were all separate and had to be put in individually. But it's so cool to honestly see Soviet technology that never made it to the moon but was serious about it. Anyway, thank you for watching. Click the subscribe button and check out my other content. Have a great day. Our mission is to make you space intelligent.